Hey guys, welcome back to CreativeMarksUniversity.com's YouTube channel. I know it's been a little while since I've updated it, but we have a lot of new and exciting content both here as well as at CreativeMarksUniversity.com. So don't forget to check back at both sites. And let us know if there's anything particular you'd like to see by writing in the comments below. And let's get started. Uh, so one of the things that I often do as an exercise either in the morning or when I don't have too much cognitive ability meaning either no coffee or I'm exhausted from the day either previously or at the end of the day I often use blob sketches which are just uh, a way to understand how to utilize silhouette so if, if I'm gonna actually draw here and create a cool silhouette who knows what this this gentleman is doing here. Um, sometimes it's a lot easier to get caught up in too much detail when you just need to keep it simple. Right? And one of the things that I learned a long time ago uh, from one of my mentors, John Navarez, is K-I-S-S, -S, which means keep it simple, stupid. That doesn't maybe keep it simple silly is better so the reason for this is yeah you know what it it probably is easier for me because I've been drawing for a while or or um, someone with more experience to kind of stick to a silhouette but not necessarily lose the three-dimensional capability uh, which which is a big consideration now because you know if you look at most television and film even though a lot of stuff is animated overseas, if it's for TV, it still has uh, 3D capabilities depending upon the medium it's made in. So one of the things that I often do is I'll take the fat end of a marker, uh, it could be Prismacolor or whatever, and I'll, I'll come up with these blob shapes, okay, and just come up with a, a random shape that allows me to not get too involved and eventually make something out of it. But there's another consideration that should happen is within a value structure, this is going to be scary, of something, uh, value structure has to do with light to dark. So if I have three values, and obviously the bottom one would be the darkest dark, you have to be able to consider how to create something in the middle or a little bit lighter so that you can see the overall design. So if, if you blur your eye or you squint your eye, which is called the secret squint, which I learned from a video uh, that Richard Schmid put out way back when, who, who is a, a realist painter. Um, I actually have four values, to be honest. One, two, three, four. And I know this seems a little too, too complex maybe in the beginning just talking about blob sketches. But what you can see is if I use a marker like this, it's pretty close to two or three. But if I use a marker like this, which is darker, it's closer to the four or even darker. So you might not be able to come back into something to give it the attention of um, design you're looking for. So if I, if I wanted to come into this guy and create a cool dude, say, hey, man, what are you doing, man? i just drawing some blob shapes, man. Um, yeah, you know, it is kind of hard to see it. I don't know if you guys could see this. It still has all the uh, control that you're looking for when you're coming to acquire some sort of cloud-like feeling, meaning you look at a cloud and see a shape, and it allows you to kind of use your, your brain and your first impulse in order to create a design. But sometimes either that's too light or that's too dark, so I often will try to focus on something that's in the middle. And this is going to go uh, many places here because it's going to help you down the road to create a middle value, but also to understand how to utilize that in the, uh, if you want to go darker or lighter or what have you. So 
instantly, if, if I do this, you can kind of see this guy's like, look, I like this. This is like when we're out there on the farm just relaxing. You know, so I know I'm a dork, and I think you just have to kind of like become the character and, and, and feel like it, you know. <laughs> Maybe he's a little sheepish eyes, a little tired. He's always just a little bit not there, but there. You know, maybe he's got hair in the front, something like that. A little bowl cut like uh, our good old friends from Dumb and Dumber. But not the sequel, because that wasn't good. Uh, so, you know, this, as you can see here, I could push and pull, and you see that the line that I'm using, you could use any pencil or pen, this happens to be Prismacolor uh, black pencil, and it gives me a pretty heavy line. So even though that this one works really well, the, it's, the contrast isn't enough to kind of see. Maybe it's too dark, the, the ink, the marker. So I usually go in the middle or something like that. Now, there, there's a hundred million different, you know, opportunities for this, okay? And whatever marker you're interested in, could be Tria, could be Copic, whatever. Um, I'm just interested in something in the middle so it allows me to kind of see. But uh, eventually I could formulate my own what I'm looking at. So I want a middle value. I think I said that enough, right? Sorry. But it's important to me. Maybe he's got little curly cues up here. Maybe he's got no chin. He's a no chinner. Maybe I just alter the design just a tiny bit to give you a little little wedge shape and a little cactus shape or a, a brush shape or something. So yeah, I mean it, it this really helps me come up with a lot of different opportunities that I might not have thought about. Plus, I'm exhausted from the day, either in the morning or at night. So I, I literally will just create random shapes and uh, try to not get too involved in controlling them. As you can see, this marker is actually dying a little bit, which is still cool. Actually gives you a nice little dry brush feel there. So, you know, this is the point where I, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, Mortimer. What do you mean here? That's about 20 chins. The banker. Well, not quite sure, but uh, we can't approve your loan unless you do a couple things here. One is uh, come back tomorrow. But tomorrow's Sunday. You won't be open. Exactly. So this really helps me to kind of loosen up. And, I, you know, I mean, you could do a million different things. I, I talk about this um, on my uh, video series at creativemarksuniversity.com extensively. So I, I just wanted to make sure that everyone had the opportunity to um, kind of see little tricks of the trade before you know, they get involved in purchasing something because I know how I am too. I'm just always looking for a, a bit of new information and fun stuff. And also, this is not something, you know, look, look, if you really wanted to just play around here, um, you know, you could create a, an octopus character. I know that uh, with Finding Dory, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, you have... Uh, that kind of in the public consciousness right now. So who knows, maybe it's a little eye over here, eye over here. Whoop, yep, yep, yep. A little muzzle shape. So now I'm trying to build the 3D into it. So you never know where this will take you. You know, they have a little, a cool wedge shape here, a little iron, flat iron shape over here. So, you know, again, this isn't, something new. A, a lot of different instructors taught me this, this process. Um, and it, it really helps. Uh, I'll be honest. I, 
when I get stuck or I don't want to think or I'm a little frustrated, this is something that I go for right away. And I think that, you know, it's so accessible and easy that it allows you to see patterns or shapes that you might not come up with yourself, but also it's, it's the principle of seeing it on the tile in the bathroom or, or clouds in the sky or something like that. It's the same thing. We are creative people, and it's just a cool way to come up with button eyes here to come up with something that might be foreign to you and make you happy you know it's nice to you know a lot of times I think art can be frustrating and what's frustrating about it is you're you're continuing either your successes or mistakes that you habitually do and you just are looking for more and a different opportunity to come up with you know, a different design, a different shape, a different process. It's our nature to want to um, create something new. So I think that this is a great opportunity. And uh, I still utilize it all the time today. You know, if you look, a lot of these shapes are too similar when it comes to a taper down or the lip here at the ball on top. So maybe I'm consciously... Um, doing it too often so that gives me a chance to be horizontal t-shaped or more circle maybe I look the other way and I come up with the shape um, it's it's not often that I don't uh, take this and do it in a meeting or uh, I shift the page sideways and every time you pass it to the next person they have to shift it uh, once so it makes a circle at the end of it so you kind of have like faces radiating out of the middle uh, when meetings go south which can often happen at work so it just keeps the fun in it so hopefully this helps I know that uh, other people have have mentioned this and it, it it really does work for me so I hope it works for you don't forget to keep coming back to both this YouTube channel as well as the website for all new lesson packages that we're really excited to offer you it's been a while, but they're currently being edited and will be available soon.